Welcome everybody back to another episode of Adventures of Commercialization. Today we have James Wagner, who is the co-founder and CEO of Jewelcase. Jewelcase is a company he founded back in 2017, 2015 that designs and manufactures battery systems and can ideally size for all applications, anything from your local campsite all the way uh, to as large as a music festival. So thank you so much for being with us today, James. Yeah, thanks for having me. Cool. So I have had the pleasure of watching your journey um, from your early stages uh, all the way up until now. So tell us a little bit about your product and, and where you're at today. Yeah, thank you. So um, you know, Jewel Case started in 2015, like you said, in building a product platform that sizes and scales for all of this stuff. And it really started with that vision that Alex Livingston and I had uh, back in the day. And, um, you know, it's it's been something that we've been working on for a very long time. In 2015, the environment, the customers, the technology weren't, you know, quite there. But, um, you know, we knew that it was trending that way and it was kind of building to something that was much greater. And so, um, you know, since we um, started with uh, just Alex and I and an idea, it's uh, transitioned where, you know, we've actually built out uh, five different versions of the products that we built and sold to customers and incorporate the feedback back into our product. Uh, we now have uh, seven patents that have been granted. Uh, we have, um, have about $4 million in fundraising now. Uh, and um, we have a very, you know, uh, exciting team that I'm really proud to be built up uh, with about 10 different internal employees and then, you know, another myriad of contractors, whether it's website development, you know, that kind of stuff as well. So um, in the last uh, three years, we've been fortunate enough to double our sales every year. Uh, that's despite the pandemic and losing some of that um, uh, focus where, you know, our focus was events. And uh, with the pandemic, that went away and we were able to still double those sales. So, uh, you know, it's been a very wild ride. It's been really exciting. Uh, you know, I've certainly learned a lot uh, and there's a lot more to come. You guys were definitely successful in pivoting. Just in reviewing your websites, it looks like you guys are doing home backups, which we know was really needed a couple years ago in Texas. Um, we're looking at outdoors, RVs, food trucks, which I just think is fantastic, construction sites, and then as you mentioned, events. So really in a wide range. Um, tell us a little bit. So in general, it's like a generator, right? But what makes your generator different from others? What kind, what kind of things did you add into those patents to really push yourselves outside of, let's say, the generator box? Yeah, so we um, ultimately thought that all of these power applications should be solved with one product platform, one simple, elegant solution for anything that you need. Uh, and with that idea in mind, you know, we've been building and selling to customers, understanding that each step of the way, there's a lot of additional technology to develop within all of that. And then so the way the jewel case is a little bit different is, is that we, you know, can be so much more modular. The way I like to phrase it is that, you know, we're the Lego blocks for all of your power needs. And then so your home can have 10 of these systems. Uh, you can then carry two for a uh, tailgate and then carry four for a campsite. You know, the point that your home grows, you could buy another one and suddenly you have 11 for your home in a dynamic setting. Uh, and then so, um, you know, I think both Alex and I are, you know, real big, I mean, we're engineers at heart. Uh, we really fundamentally believe in, in the value of having this modularity in multiple different use cases. Um, and then so, you know, when you start to do that, there's a lot of technology challenges that you encounter when you're trying to simultaneously solve for home backup power, campsite, food truck, music festivals and events. All of these have different voltages, different power requirements, can be charged with solar, you know, solar not available, all of these different things. And, and then as we started to tackle those problems, you start to create a more refined product. You start to understand the technology that you are developing and the patents that can be created. Okay, wonderful. So under your leadership, Jewelcase has developed numerous battery products that all integrate into the same product platform architecture. Is this meaning that they can be charged in different ways? You say you're taking it out camping, we're taking it to festivals, you can charge, recharge pieces of it in your home. How, how does that work? Yeah, exactly. Right. So you could start off with the, the simple starter pack on our website. Uh, it starts off at $700. 
And um, that's going to have one battery module and one control module. And so they can start to be used interchangeably. Um, in addition to that, you can tack on a solar charging uh, module. Uh, you can then also add that to your home. But that one starter pack is going to power a 42-inch TV for about eight hours. So if you need 16 hours, you, know, you can stack two of them. They can be charged via wall outlet. They can be charged either solar as well. Uh, they can hold that charge for about a year and they're gonna do you know, more, well more than a thousand cycles before you're gonna notice any type of performance decrease in the battery. That's fantastic. And so if I have say a couple different pieces of the stack puzzle here and I am camping and I say lose 25% of my charge, can I throw a stack out to charge while I'm continuing to use the product itself? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and so you could dynamically charge that with some portable solar panels. Uh, you could also swap that out and stack one that is you know, empty with one that is full. You know, the, the technology in that would mean that each one of these battery management systems are smart and communicating and are able to turn themselves on and off. So as a, as a consumer, it's seamless for you, but within the battery, there's a lot going on to make sure that it's safe and that it works and that it protects the battery and protects you. Um, but now you can, you know, use these modules as like a fuel source, you know, meaning that, you know, maybe you are remote and solar is not keeping up with your demand, you could then show up with a truckload of batteries that are freshly fully charged and you could exchange those and you could exchange them, you know, uh, with live power, meaning you don't have to turn anything off. And then you continue to stack and swap those. And suddenly you, you've replaced that fuel source with, you know, a whole new uh, fresh battery pack and the application still runs. That's fantastic. That's very cool. Keep keep the battery going. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your journey towards patents. You said you have seven patents. And I we did talk in previous episodes about the journey to patents and owning your your product and owning your art. So what what kind of hurdles did you have to go through to achieve the patent uh, agreements that you have today? Yeah, you know, so you know, that journey is going to kind of depend on the type of company you are and, you know, the funding and your experience with patent attorneys. Um, you know, for Jewel Case, uh, both Alex and I, you know, are, have been involved in technology for a very long time. Um, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer. I have my PE stamp and been working with developing technologies for a very long time. Same with Alex. Uh, and then so, you know, the first patents were, you know, working with some patent attorney friends. Um, you know, a lot of the patent writing was done by Alex uh, initially, um, and then fine tuning by um, patent attorneys to then be submitted. Uh, and, um, you know, you, you have to have some sort of you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, inherently that if you have a patent that you are uh, incredibly innovative, uh, but you certainly need to have some sort of different perspective on things. So, you know, make sure that you're checking out uh, different patents, that you're not just going in and you've never read a patent. You know, I really like the uh, Google uh, patent search. If you just, um, you know, Google Google patents, it, it will then pull up and you can then search, you know, any patent for anything by artists or you know by title and um and then you know you will need to do a lot of writing yourself um you know I, even if you hire a patent attorney to write the patent which would be a little bit expensive they're going to need all that information to be pulled from you um so uh you know it's it's fun to think that you know you could just be the idea guy and and that you know everything else kind of falls into place uh, but you know, that's from my experience, that's not been the case. You know, you, you need to start off with a great idea, but you know, everyone's got great ideas and then you need to continue to evolve and iterate that. And, and you're going to need to, you know, out execute everyone. Um, and then you're going to need to build a team and you're going to need to have fundraise. And, you know, this journey is a very long, arduous journey, but, um, you know, it's incredibly fulfilling. It's, uh, by far the most exciting thing I've ever done. And, uh, I would highly recommend it to everyone, but not because it's easy. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Um, as I've watched your journey, you guys came and did a round of angel funding. Um, what other types of, of funding? You said you only have 10 internal employees. And a lot of, uh, in our past episodes, we did discuss, you know, the friends and family rounds. But when you have such a tight niche little group, I know that you did angel funding. What other types of funding have you guys uh, sought out for this project? 
so we, you know, we started off with a quick, uh, like, friends and family round. And then, um, you know, we worked with uh, Koretsu, uh, which was great in terms of raising a angel round. And we did that a couple of different times. Um, you know, the angel community has been really great to jewel case and what they've done. Um, and then um, we actually launched a, a crowdfunding uh, campaign on WeFunder. So, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a community round. Uh, uh, that allows anyone to partake in Jewel Case. Uh, on that community round on WeFunder, there are now over 800 investors that have invested in the Jewel Case on there. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, it's uh, wefunder.com slash jewel.case. Uh, and we have just a little bit less uh, in, left in there. So we're about ready to close out that round. You can raise up to 1.07. I think the latest uh, number was you know just under 1.06. A million that we've raised on there. So it's going to close out this month. Uh, in addition to kind of the equity side of things, uh, Jewel Case has gotten a couple different uh, inventory loans from, you know, um, people that are writing debt financing for that. And then we've also applied for a lot of uh, grants. You know, Jewel Case is certainly a great candidate to, to provide that clean power for a lot of government initiatives, whether it's defense, it's, uh, you know, community, it's uh, backup power, grid power. There's a lot of different things there as well. So, you know, you have to kind of approach you know, everything that you can uh, and all hands on deck on everything. Yes, from all angles. That's great. Tell us a little bit about your Green Power Initiative. I was seeing that, you know, previously you were pretty close with the electric car uh, groups. Uh, tell me a little bit how about those partnerships. So with, you know, electric cars, um, you know, this actually goes back to a previous startup that Alex and I started in 2007. Uh, so R2EV was founded by Alex and I, and what we developed was, you know, these battery blades that were swappable, exchangeable uh, back in the day, um, and uh, built out the prototype, and ultimately got a contract with Moselle Engineering and Fiat and the Spanish government for 12,000 taxis using these 20-pound modular battery blades that would mean that, you know, that taxi just needs to exchange these packs and there'd be about, um, you know, there's eight of them on each one of these taxis. And then you, you don't have to worry about charging anymore. Uh, and, and then, so we have an extensive background on batteries and around, you know, uh, the EV charging space. Um, and, you know, back then that was the time of like project better place. If anyone recalls that, um, they, they had a massive, um, you know, 800 pound battery that would use a mechanical arm to swap out in cars. Uh, they actually had $1.2 billion in funding uh, that ultimately failed um, in 2010, kind of that same timeline with the financial crisis. So it was, you know, a, a pretty big shock. Uh, ours was a much less of, of a, you know, we had a lot less investors, of course, uh, but we learned a lot from that, uh, which you can see in the EV charging space now. And, you know, if you watch like the Super Bowl, you know, every commercial is either crypto or it was electric vehicles. And, uh, you know, now let's start thinking about what that's going to take to take every gas station and swap it out with an EV charging station. Uh, and, you know, these are fast chargers. So you don't just take your standard 20 amp circuit. You're going to need a lot of copper to get the right amperage to charge there properly. And then the electricity is um, you know, the utility is going to now suddenly have these variable loads. So the demand charges for a gas station to just have the ability to have a quick 20 minute charge from an electric vehicle are also going to be astronomical. So a lot of that doesn't make sense. Uh, and you know what we've always imagined is this product platform that bridges all of these applications and electric vehicles is absolutely one of them. And then so you know the dual case technology does extend to very large applications such as the music festivals that we described, but also electric vehicle charging. And what you can do now is that you can use Jewel Case with some of these patents we have to provide that, that fast EV charging at a gas station without any uh, capital costs for that operator, for that, that gas station operator. And then, you know, Jewel Case would absolutely develop, um, you know, charge, there'd be an upside or upcharge for us to operate that EV charging, but then we're providing the electric vehicle charging at a competitive rate that's competitive to the market. The, e, the gas station suddenly has EV charging. And what they want is they want that EV uh, owner to be there for 20 minutes at the convenience store for you know for 20 minutes as they wait for their electric vehicle to charge, which now makes it for it's a win for everyone. 
That is correct. We know that Starbucks has already hopped on that game. So <laughs> wonderful. All right. Well, tell us a little bit. Uh, so I'm really excited to hear last time we spoke or that I was watching you pitch, we were hearing about um, some EDC contracts. I know that COVID put a wrench in that plan for a little while, but tell us a little bit about this festival. Like, how does this work? Are we talking about backstage? Are we talking about EDC has campsites that I know that are run? Um, by the, their own electricity. So how does Jewel Case play a part in this? Yeah, so when we you know, really thought of a go-to-market for Jewel Case, uh, we really like the event space for several reasons. You know, one is that you can get a brand and a name out there. You know, two, it's a really ideal application for Jewel Case because in you know an event or a music festival, you know, the site lighting, uh, the ticketing, uh, merchandise, you know, catering food, first aid and safety, the main stage, all of these are very different power needs, power dynamics, uh, where if you're trying to solve that with something that is static, um, you know, you're going to be too expensive over here and you're not going to be able to power things over there. So, you know, Jewel Case is ideally sized for that. It gets our name out there. And you're dealing with enterprise customers that are publicly stating they need to be eco-friendly and green. And their alternative are these very dirty, um, diesel generators that, you know, are, you know, as an example, a music festival diesel generator will emit more CO2 over, over weekend than you and I driving our cars for an entire year. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of incentive to doing all of this and Jewel Case is ideally built for it. And then, so, you know, each festival is different, you know, whether it's a week long festival or it's just a one night show. Um, so, you know, Jewel Case can dynamically size for that. So meaning that, you know, we can set up with solar and be charged indefinitely with hot swapping so that that power never runs out for an entire week. Or we can show up with a fully charged battery system and power it for a night. And if there's any issues, just do a live swap just at that one evening event, right? But uh, what you would do is that, you know, we sell to event operators. They show up with a truckload of batteries and they can, of jewel case batteries, and they can dynamically size jewel case power solutions for each one of the power applications. And you can eliminate all the cabling, the cable ramps, you eliminate the diesel generators. And we do go all the way up to uh, the main stage. So, you know, check out the Jewel Case YouTube channel. There's some really exciting demonstration videos and what we've done. Um, but, um, you know, events were the focus of Jewel Case for a while there until the pandemic. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to have a product that, you know, arches beyond just events. And then we're able to sell into these other business enterprises. And, you know, our focus has been more on the business enterprise. Certainly, you get, as a consumer, you can buy it. Um, but, you know, let's take a food truck. You know, they're going to need about uh, $15,000 worth of dual case battery systems. Uh, but they come to us. You know, we're, we're selling um, you know, many different food trucks and styles and sizes every month. Uh, right now. And it's because that diesel generator experience is so bad for them. And the ROI really proves itself to pay for itself in less than two years. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, two years is a good turnaround for that. <clears throat> so when we're talking about needing more power, are they larger products? You said you have a couple different ones. And I did hear you came out with a new product this year um, called Stigma. So is this a larger? Does it have more stacks on it? Yeah. How does that work? Uh, so Sigma, right? So, uh, you know, it's kind of another nerd reference in terms of the sum of all of your parts. Uh, but, um, it, you know, so Sigma is a culmination of the last year's worth of work on the internal dual case team. Uh, about a year ago, we hired uh, Dave DeMuro, which was Apple's head of battery. Um, you know, he's got a career around consumer focused battery applications. He had 17 patents to his name around these consumer applications and Sigma is the culmination of everything that Alex and I've worked on, uh, plus, you know, kind of inserting Dave and a whole, um, you know, large engineering team to advance this product to where we wanted to take it. So uh, we unveiled Sigma at CES and what it does is it incorporates all the feedback we've got from our uh, customers. It integrates, you know, the latest battery chemistry developments. Um, you know, so Jewel Case is not trying to become a battery chemistry company, but, you know, similar to Apple or Dell, we'll integrate the latest advancements in battery chemistry into a product platform that is now accessible for the end user. Uh, and, and then so we have, you know, twice as much energy per 
uh, battery module. We have twice as much power uh, on the inverter side. It's got a full IoT capability. Um, it really provides all of the needs that all of our customers have been saying, and it's you know it, it really advances the dual case product in in a very exciting, substantial way. But you know all of these different systems really stack together, right? So there are smaller. There's different modules. Uh, Zoe, but each one works within this product product platform. You know, meaning that you know, if you have one jewel case, it does work and interact with all of the other jewel case systems, um, and that's fundamental to what we're trying to build here. Really, so stacking technology on top of itself. I really, <laughs> I really appreciate that because as new products come out, sometimes they're not interchangeable or working with the the previous ones. So something from going from seven hundred dollars and then realizing that you need maybe a little bit more, and moving up to maybe a food truck, fifteen thousand dollars in two years turnaround time to make up your money seems pretty reasonable and affordable for anybody to to build up on upon. <clears throat> Yeah, How? and we really like that, right? I mean, um, you know, people are going to buy a dual case battery system for one application, but then our customers start to realize all of the other applications that they have for power, and then they come back and they, you know, buy another system and another system. So, um, you know, with the electrical grid failures that we're having, with the adoption of additional renewables that are going to tax. Uh, the grid even further. Um, and then with the kind of dependence on further technology where, you know, it's it's now a must to have that power at a campsite or a tailgate that wasn't the case before. You know, this is really the ideal time for a product like Jewel Case. And uh, it's something that Alex and I have been building for a very long time. And, you know, it's really exciting to see all of these kind of, you know, larger forces at play come together to where, you know, we we have believed for a very long time that this is the future. I believe it. I definitely believe it. I've had a pleasure watching your company grow, and I'm excited to hear where you're going. So tell us where we're at now. So we're talking about a little bit of extra crowdfunding. Um, maybe if you could tell our audience, we don't know if we've touched on crowdfunding thus far. If I'm about to go and throw some more money at you, how how does that work for the general public in your crowdfunding role that you have right now? Yeah, so there's, there's several of these community uh, round raise platforms. Uh, the largest one is WeFunder that we're on. And so WeFunder.com, they have a really great FAQ plan session out there if you have any other questions, but it allows anyone to invest into a startup that maybe is a little bit earlier than what you know would normally be acceptable. And then so there was some SEC regulations that they kind of changed everything um, about three years ago um, that, that have allowed crowdfunding to really blossom. Uh, and, and what you're starting to see is a lot of startups are going this way. Um, you know, typically, you know, in the past, it was through accredited investors. You don't have to be accredited anymore. Uh, and then so WeFunder allows you to invest um, as a little as $250 into Jewel Case. Uh, and ultimately what you're gonna get is you're gonna get uh, stock into Jewel Case and you're gonna get stock into Jewel Case at an earlier time before, you know, it actually would be publicly listed or traded um, as a, you know, a actual publicly traded company. Um, and, uh, and you'd be able to kind of come alongside this very exciting uh, journey. Um, you know, the mechanics of it, there would be a, you know, a special purpose vehicle for everyone in there um, that allows, you know, Jewel Case to accept uh, this funding. So, you know, if you know uh, startups and you have a cap table, um, you know, you want to make sure that cap table is not flooded with, you know, thousands of people. And so the way the regulation allows this to set up is that you have a special purpose vehicle, SPV, that all of this money then goes into, and then that shows up on the cap table. This keeps our cap table clean, but then it does, you know, WeFunder manages this investment so that each one of those investors, you know, has ownership in a dual case and sees, you know, realizes the upside, the, the exciting potential as we continue to grow. Wonderful. And as you grow, what is the next thing on your calendar? So we're finishing out this crowdfunding and then what other, do we have events on the calendar now that they're opening back up or, or what's to see in the near future that we can watch out for? Yeah. So, you know, events are now starting to come more and more out uh, past COVID. And, and then so Jewel Case has been going to many different events, whether it's a PGA golf tournament, uh, we're at EDC Las Vegas in October. Um, you know, what we've been able to do is to 
um, you know, work with, you know, really great companies such as Insomniac. And we've been working with Insomniac now for the last, uh, well, since 2018, um, and they realizing their uh, clean energy vision. And, and then, so we will be back at Insomniac in May. Uh, and, um, you know, some really exciting updates that um, will probably be coming with that, you know, nothing set in stone, of course, uh, but, you know, definitely be looking for that as we continue to build up that relationship. Uh, but then, you know, beyond just, you know, something exciting with Insomniac, uh, there's a lot of other things going on with events. Um, in addition, you know, everything that's going on with just, you know, businesses that need power, and uh, it's no longer acceptable to have that power come from generators. You know, this has been able to make Jewel Case be a very exciting uh, product or technology for these businesses. Wonderful. <clears throat> well, I will definitely keep an eye out for you. It's really just coming from the event space. It's uh, rewarding to hear that we are moving towards this clean tech and really making a difference on the impact on how these events are run. So thank you for being a key part of that whole that whole thing. So I do, since you mentioned your previous company and being kind of not at the right time and space for the audience that you were, you were reaching for, but now I think that you've come up with something that is easily pivoting to multiple different avenues to help in, in all regards, especially um, now after COVID. I know that a lot of businesses either shut down and move to food trucks or events or trying to ramp back up, do things a little bit differently and consciously. But if you had one piece of advice for entrepreneurs out there today, James, what would you give them? You know, I really like this advice, which was, you know, it's, it's not over until you say it's over, right? And, you know, so, you know, what I mean by that is that, you know, some sort of thing might be a setback, um, you know, there might not be the way that it's going that you want it to go exactly, it never will, it always will take longer, it'll always, uh, you know, cost more. Um, but the only person that can tell you that, you know, your entrepreneur journey is over is yourself. Uh, and, and while you're going through that journey, and if you've not given up, uh, if you're still determined, then, you know, continue to progress one step at a time. Uh, you know, what, Jewel case has done um, is a very long journey. Um, you know, I don't think any of these, you know, entrepreneur success stories, whatever it is, is something that happens in a short period of time. Uh, and more often than not, when I benchmark successful entrepreneurs, I learn from, you know, it's journeys like Jewel case where it's uh, years and years in the making, and uh, only you can determine when you're done with that. Thank you so much. Well, we know you're not done and we're here to watch your journey. So uh, really excited to speak with you again. I look forward to hearing more about the great things that Jewel Case is doing for the world and the community as a whole. James, thank you so much for taking your time out to meet with us today. We are at time. So everybody, thank you so much for joining us on Adventures in Commercialization. If you'd like to learn more about how to run a business and how to make some money, then please come and learn from all these success and stories from our entrepreneurs. We'll be back uh, every other week at 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.